Hey everyone, welcome to another weekly update here at Fishy Business. I'm Chuck Mayer, back on track again um, after the 4th. I hope everybody had a safe 4th. Now let's get down to business. And the business at hand at Fishy Business is standing right beside me or sitting right beside me. These 210 glass aquariums from Aquion, they do not have overflows, but the 180 and the 210 is on sale right now. $5.99 and $6.99 respectively. I've got two 210s left and two 180s left. So if you've been in the market or thinking anything about upgrading the size of your tank, for the money you absolutely cannot beat it. This is the 210 right here, of which I've got two, and then the uh, 180 right here. So I would strongly urge to come check them out before they're gone. We do not have any more at this price. When they're gone, they're gone. Okay, let's head over to the other part of the store and let's look at what came in this week. Okay, so a lot of new came in this week. Since last week, we didn't have anything. Because of the fourth, we didn't get anything new. But I'm gonna take you through right now and show you what came in this week. Now, we have the Cardinal Tetras and the Rummy Nose Tetras. As most of you may or may not know, this is one of the best fish for a Planet Aquarium. If you want a schooling fish that's got a lot of color, a lot of personality, looks great, Rummy nose, the cardinal tetras might be for you. These are very thick, healthy fish. Great shape this week. Come with me. I got a large royal clown knife fish that came in this week. Haven't had one of these in a very, very long time, and this is a very big one. So if you have a semi-aggressive tank, or maybe a tank of uh, South American cichlids, or just a tank with big fish, and you want that oddity, this guy might be for you. I also have right beside him the large regular clown knife, which is kind of hanging up here. Uh, the uh, curvature kind of looks like the blade of a Gurkha. It's a uh, very, very cool fish, very different fish. A little cryptic, but very much a statement maker. Right down here, I have a Lima shovel nose catfish that came in this week. This puppy gets big, very pretty fish with the black and white stripes. Will eat anything he can swallow, but a very good fish nonetheless if you've got larger, larger fish. Congo Tetras came in this week, both coloring up with the blue haze around the dorsal part of the fish, and the frilly fins are just now into, uh, into development, so that would be a great fish. Moving right over here, we got a tiger shovel nose in. And I don't know exactly where he, oh, he's right behind. Now this is a baby. So if you have a plan tank or something that may, might not be ready just yet, but you want something at a, at a young age that can grow, and these puppies do grow, the uh, Tiger Shovel Nose Cat might be perfect. Just remember to keep it with larger fish. The uh, Cutter Cichlid, which we got in, which is another type of dwarf cichlid. This, these are, came in colored up, so they look really, really pretty. Already developing some yellows and reds. As you see, this knife fish has kind of moved into view as well. You can kind of see what you can mix them with. This is a great cichlid to kind of group together with some oddballs. This way you've got kind of a group of color with a group of fish that are kind of all the same. And then at the same time, you've got your oddities that really stand out. So those are some really cool fish right there. Oh, no, sorry, come. Right over here, we have a fish that is very rare. We, I don't know when the last time or even if we've had one. This is called a rainbow wolf fish. This is a very specific to tank only, might could be kept with larger cichlids, but a very, very aggressive fish uh, that comes out of the Amazon. The natives are actually more scared of the wolf fish than they are piranha, if that gives you some kind of idea. They get about a foot, foot and a half long. They have razor sharp teeth. They are an oddity we don't normally have, but I know a lot of you will do a species only tank for something like this guy. And we've got one right now. I only have the one, but fantastic new fish and an oddball just to come see. Oh, above me, the arowana. I did get one of these this week. Really, really beautiful silver arowana. Right here, I've got some assorted Oscars. Really, really nice shape on these guys. 
Uh, I've got the albino tiger Oscars, the reds, and I've got the regular tiger Oscars. They all look really, really good. Great color, great weight, a good starter size Oscar. Oscars are tank busters. They get very, very large, but they are also a very good quote unquote pet fish. They will live a long time. They can get quite personal. So if you just want to tank with a couple fish and you're willing to get a big enough tank, like the ones we talked about earlier, an Oscar might be the perfect fish for you. Now, if you'll come with me right here, we will take a stroll to the back and see what else came in. Right here are some of the prettiest assorted show peacocks I've gotten so far this year. And I say this year, I mean this year. If you've got an African cichlid tank or you want to set something up that's not a saltwater tank, that's a really, really pretty freshwater tank that has the illusion of saltwater or even just has its own beauty for its own reasons, uh, a tank of uh, Tanganyikan peacocks might be for you. I can honestly say we have not had this many fantastic color morphs this year. So while I've got them, I've got a tank of them, reasonably priced, come check them out. Most important thing that I got in freshwater this week, finally, are some koi. And I've got them in every type of size and shape. Right now you're in the thick of pond season. If you're thinking about stocking a pond, if you maybe have had a pond for a while and haven't really had great luck with particular kinds of fish in there, uh, right now, I've got some young, very affordable koi that have beautiful, beautiful colors. Uh, these white platinum ogons and the Yamabuki ogons, which are these real metallic yellow, I always tell people, you can put those in a pond and when the sun hits them, you can see them from across the yard. I also want to draw your attention to a couple other koi that came in. I got these black koi, which are said to be good luck. And these right here, which are our Waki Ogon Koi, which I'm probably going to get one for myself from my pond, uh, as I have not had it before. They have a beautiful white body for the most part with highlights of metallic yellow. So strongly would suggest coming in and checking out what, what came in with the fresh water. Now we'll move to saltwater. Hey, okay, so hey, uh, saltwater fish. It's time for saltwater fish. So what I wanted to tell you was what came in today with saltwater and what I got is something I've been trying to get for a few weeks now. Uh, I got four baby seahorses. They're all eating. They just came in today. They've been here all of, I think, an hour. Uh, they are fantastic and uh, they're doing great. I got those. I got a green mandarin dragonette, which is running around the tank somewhere. Yep, okay, I see you. We got one mandarin grace. Can't see grace. I'll right, find out if I, we got more, but I only saw that we got one mandarin in. I know a lot of you have been asking about it so I did get one we'll see how long he lasts now if you'll come with me roll around here I got a great selection of cardinal fish this week I've been trying to get groups and schools of cardinal fish the bangy eyes and the pajama cardinals as you can see they're all kind of schooling together uh, but I did get some nice cardinal fish this week I also got, and many of you ask about this, are they reef safe? Yes, they're reef safe. The black tip uh, red starfish. Use these a lot in service. They are great because they hang out. They don't hide very much. And if you want a kind of a starfish presence in your tank with a pretty, pretty color, those are absolutely perfect. Um, now, if you'll come into the main part of our island, I got in some beautiful uh, Watanabe uh, angelfish. I got two of them. Pretty, pretty powdery blue color. I got in some beautiful firefish, as you can see. These can make great fish to school as well or to keep singly. Uh, they have a fantastic temperament. Every fish in the darkfish family, and there are three of them, the purple firefish, the red firefish, and the one I don't typically stock from Australia that runs about 200 bucks. Uh, but the regular firefish, very affordable, inexpensive saltwater fish, beautiful soft pastel colors, fantastic temperament, uh, and great adaptability. Uh, this is a great fish for the, for the tank. I got purple queen antias in, as you can see, 
trolling about up top. Uh, if you want a burst of purple in your tank and a very peaceful fish, this ocean perch may be the perfect fish for you. Uh, right up here, I have the blue spotted Toby puffer, uh, which a lot of people love. Not exactly reef safe. Uh, it's not super aggressive. It'll just eat whatever it can based on its size. It's a dwarf puffer or part of the uh, smaller puffer, so it's not gonna get very big. Uh, if you have a non-reef tank, but have live rock and you have just kind of a communal tank, this would be a great fish. Uh, as well, one of my favorite triggers in the world, uh, Pseudobaliscus fuscus. It is the blue line trigger fish. This trigger is no joke. As it grows, it gets very mean, but it is beautiful. Beautiful. It's an all yellow trigger with blue striations across the whole body and an electric blue eye. So for species only or for an aggressive tank, this is the perfect size and price point to get him because he's very young. Um, you can already see we've had him for an hour and he's hanging out. There's also, I think, a clown trigger in there with him, but blue line trigger all the way. That's a great fish. Rolling around here is an ASO tank. This is a great statement making fish if you have a larger reef tank and you can accommodate more of an open water tank. Uh, Naso tang is absolutely fantastic. Once they adapt to the tank, they're very, very hardy, very, very beautiful fish. Right over here, we just got in the sailfin tank. He's hiding, he's, he's, but he's absolutely a beautiful fish as well. This is one of my top five saltwater fish, period. It's one of the easiest saltwater fish to keep. Um, and moving right along here. Huh, I got some gold nugget clown fish. That was a surprise, I didn't see them earlier. This is a phenomenal clown fish pair. Uh, something I haven't had. Back here. Adapting well with the algae pad that was left in the tank. This is the uh, banded moray eel. We just got one of those. We sold snowflake from the last video and the tessalata, but this is a very unique eel. While not quite as pretty as the tessalata, it's a third the price and still a very beautiful moray eel, the banded moray. So, I want to show you a couple other things real quick. The electric frilly mushrooms came in this week and I got in some beautiful, beautiful green star polyprops. There is more stuff still being put out. I've got a couple buckets of stuff floating in it, but right now that's a good quick overview of what came in this week. Uh, I guess we'll leave it there. Come see me. Uh, we're open. We uh, wish you a very wonderful week. I hope everything goes well. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, come see us. Have a great week.